Welcome back everybody. In this video, we got two vectors. So u is 2i minus j minus 4k, and then v is 2i plus j plus k. And we have to find these five different things that are related to those vectors. Now, whenever I get a question like this, the vectors are in this kind of format, first thing I like to do is I like to rewrite them in component form. So this u here, x component is 2, y component is negative 1, z component is negative 4. And then v, x component is 2, y component is 1, z component is 1 as well. Now that we have it in component form, let's find what uh, we're asked to solve here. So u dot v, dot product between those, that's pretty simple. What we're going to do, multiply all the co uh, components by each other and then add them up. So 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, and then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And then these would sum up to negative 1. <clears throat> so that there is the dot product between u and v. Part b, the cross product between u and v. So whenever I'm asked to find the cross product, the way I like to do it is I like to first list out the components of u, which is the first vector. So you always want to put this first vector on top of the second one. And you always want to start with the middle component first. So you got negative 1, then we move to the right. We got negative 4, and then there's nowhere else to go. So we go back to 2, and then we finish off with that middle component again. Basically, when you list out the components, the first and the last here should always be the middle component, the y component. And then uh, for this one, same thing. So the middle component's 1. Go to the right. Z component is 1. And then 2. And then uh, 1 again. Right? So we listed out u up here and then v up here. Now, if this was v times u, then these rows would be switched. This one would be at the top, and then this row would be at the bottom. And then what I like to do is I like to just find the x component, the y component, the z component, the cross product. So what I do is uh, negative 1 times 1, and then I subtract this product here. So 1 times negative 4. And negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. These negatives will turn into a positive, so negative 1 plus 4 gives us positive 3. Then the y component, we go negative 4 times 2 minus 1 times 2. And that would be what? Negative 8 minus 2, which is negative 10. And then 2 times 1 minus these multiplied, so 2 times negative 1. Then we'd have 2, negative, negative, turn into a positive, so 2 plus 2 gives us 4. And those are the components of the cross product. So the cross product is 3, negative 10, and 4. So this here is a vector that's perpendicular to both u and v. That's what the cross product gives you, a vector that's perpendicular to both. Right, so moving on to part c. Got to find the magnitude of uh, 2u minus v. So first thing, let's find what the vector 2u minus v is. So what's 2u going to be? Well, 2u is going to be all the components of u multiplied by 2. So it's going to be 4, negative 2, negative 8. And then 2u minus v. We're going to take all the components of 2u and subtract the components of v. So 4 minus 2 is 2, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, and then negative 8 minus 1 is uh, negative 9. And we're asked to find the magnitude of 2u minus v. So what we're going to have to do, square root all of the components squared and then add it up. Right, so this would be 4, 9, 81. 9 plus 81 is 90, plus 4, 94. So square root of 94. So the magnitude of 2u minus v is the square root of 
94. And I don't think this radical can simplify any further. And then moving on to part D, we have to find a unit vector that's perpendicular to both u and v. Now, since this vector is going to be perpendicular to u and v, notice we already have that when we found the cross product. This vector here is a vector that's perpendicular to both u and v. That's what the cross product gives you. We mentioned that before. However, this is not a unit vector. This is just a vector that's perpendicular to it. So what we can do is we can find a unit vector with, for this vector here. So a vector that's in the same direction, but has a magnitude of one. And how do we do that? Well, if you remember from the previous unit, the way we find a unit vector is we take a vector, find its magnitude, and then multiply all of the components by the reciprocal of that magnitude. So let's find the magnitude of the cross product first. So the magnitude of this vector is the square root of 3 squared plus negative 10 squared plus 4 squared. And then uh, this would be what? Uh, 9 plus 100, 109 plus 16 square root of 125. And this actually simplifies into uh, square root of 25, square root of 5, which is 5 root 5. You always want to simplify radicals in case stuff will cancel out potentially. So that there is the magnitude of this vector, the vector that's perpendicular to both u and v. So now to get the unit vector, What we do is we take the reciprocal of this magnitude, so 1 over 5 root 5, and multiply it by all the components. So we would have 3 times 1 over 5 root 5, which would be 3 over 5 root 5. And then uh, the y value, negative 10 times 1 over 5 root 5, so negative 10 over 5 root 5, and then the z value, 4 over 5 root 5. So that there is the unit vector, and then notice actually that we can simplify this negative 10 over 5 here. So that would be uh, negative 2 over root 5, this 5 goes away. Right, so that's an example of where we uh, simplified that radical of the magnitude and we were able to cancel stuff out. So it's always good to simplify any radicals. Um, now, another thing you can do here, instead of re uh, leaving the radicals in the denominator, you could bring them up to the numerator if that's what your teacher prefers. So the way we would do that, so for example, this x component, we got to rationalize this, so we would multiply it by root 5 over uh, root 5. So root 5 times root 5 is 5, times 5 is 25, and then 3 root 5 would be left at the top. And then same thing here, multiply this by root 5 over root 5. Root 5 over root 5 is just 5, and then negative 2 root 5. And then uh, here, multiply this by root 5 over root 5. Uh, 5 root 5 times root 5 would give us this same value, 25. And we'd have 4 root 5 at the top. So either way, whether you want to rationalize or if you're okay or if your teacher's okay with leaving radicals in the denominator, both of these answers are the same thing. So that represents a unit vector that's perpendicular to both u and v. Right, so quick recap. We already had a vector that's perpendicular to both u and v when we did the cross product here, but it's not a unit vector. To get the unit vector, we have to find the magnitude, then multiply all the components by 1 over the magnitude, or 1 over 5 root 5 in this case. So we took that, multiplied by all the components, we ended up with this, rationalized it, ended up with that. And then finally, we got to find the vector projection of u on to v. So we got to find the projection of u onto v. 
it's actually a formula for that. What is the formula? So it's basically the dot product between u and v over the vector that we're projecting it onto. It's basically the magnitude of that vector squared multiplied by that vector. So this vector here, it's always this one, the one that we are projecting it onto. So if this was uh, v onto u, this would be u, this would be u as well. But since it's onto v, it's a v and v here. So u dot v, we already know. We found it out in part a, it's negative 1. What's the uh, magnitude of v going to be? V is here, so the magnitude of v would be the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which would be root 6. So it's basically the magnitude of v squared. All right, and then times the vector v, which is 2, 1, and 1. Now, root 6 squared is just 6, so we'd have negative 1 over 6 times 2, 1, 1, and then we could distribute that scalar inside. So negative 1 over 6 times 2 is negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 over 3. And we got negative 1 over 6 times 1, negative 1 over 6 times 1. So that there is the answer to part E. That's the vector projection of u on to v. So negative 1 over 3, uh, negative 1 over 6, and negative 1 over 6. And those are your five answers.